Sorry about that. Welcome to the show today. How are you doing, Jason Bohm? I am doing just fine. Lady All Dinner. right. I'm doing great. Thank you so much. So let's talk. AnxietyCenterKC.com. We are back with you. Uh, fantastic to have you here from the Anxiety Center, our new counseling center. Uh, please quickly introduce yourself to our listeners when you can. Sure. I am Jason Bone. I've been working with adolescents and their families for a little over 30 years now. Um, I run an intensive outpatient for young people struggling with school avoidance, suicidal ideation, panic disorder, social anxiety, general anxiety, depression, self-harm, phobias, lack of meaningful connections in their life, identity issues, uh, which includes you know gender and sexuality issues, existential questions about the purpose and meaning of life kind of things. And so everything I talk about on here, I think is part of what we do in our program and what we think is really helpful and useful to young people struggling with these things. Beautiful. So the Renew Counseling Center was established by uh, your wife, right, uh, Corey? Yes, and that it was. was. years ago, and then you added on the Anxiety Center uh, approximately, what, four years ago now. So your focus on those, uh, obviously, who need help with anxiety and uh, using third-wave behavioral techniques to Kansas City Metro. So thank you. It's always a pleasure to have you here. And just want to point out again the website, anxietycenterkc.com. And Jason, I know you always have a great show planned for us. Uh, did you have an area of discussion for today that you wanted to bring up? Yeah, so we've uh, we've talked about avoidance in and really the that cycle that just leads to young people getting worse, um, and that they and almost any young person goes into that avoidance cycle if they're struggling with anxiety, depression, divorce, all kinds of things can lead to essentially doing less and have less vitality in their lives, and then that causes the cycle to keep going. So a young person that's uh, avoiding tasks, relationships, emotions or relationships can can lack motivation or they at least can look like they met lack motivation i have a lot of parents come and talk to me about how they uh can't get their young person to do anything um and so but it also looks a lot like and we've talked about defense mechanisms which are really an active process of avoiding your feelings especially pain um but avoidance during adolescence is incredibly damaging. Developmentally, adolescents are, you know, adolescence, that time period is the largest growth increase in brain functioning since our first year of life. Brains uh, need stimulus, activity, and new experiences to grow. Um, you know, everything is new in that first year, and we can still see the damage of neglect on an infant's brain. To give you an example, do you know what a, a puffer fish is, Jill? Of course I do. My kids love them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when they get scared or something happens, it's a it's a really kind of a small fish um, that pups puffs up to, to multiple times its size. Um, and this is a great example of what the brain does during that first year and during adolescence. It is supposed to expand immensely. Ne neglect will cause an infant's brain not to expand to potential. You know, an avoidance can do the same exact thing for a young person. So literally, they're not just missing out on activities and events and things right now when they're struggling. They're literally not fully developing their brain uh, moving forward. And so Sometimes a defeat can really I want to talk about what that how do we change that cycle um and and in the language i use that's the that's the discoverer and um and, and the discoverer as a process and so again this is a concept from the thriving adolescence by Lu louise hayes and and joseph Ciaracci. and it's in the discoverer is the process of helping young people to explore in order to develop skills and resources and expand just kind of the context and the context of the world they live in, um, things that are around them. So it, it includes a, the ability to track what is working. So most of us that are successful adults have figured out, well, we did this this way and it didn't work. We did it this way and it did work. So we do more of that. Um, the discoverer includes building strengths. It includes creating values. 
and it, it, it uh, creates exploring new and untested behaviors. Um, so now, just Jill, I'm going to ask you a question. What do you think? Why do we think you? Why do we think we have this period of adolescence beyond just the expansion of the brain? What is the period of adolescence supposed to do or be? Um, I, I think adolescence. I think it's time for like puberty. I think it's time for our body to physically grow uh, and let alone emotionally uh, as yep. well. Man. Yeah, I agree. You still there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay. You. Sorry, I lost you for a second. Oh, yes, I am here. Um, yeah, I, you know, physical growth is part of it, and and you just hope that a young person and and we see this too don't don't feel like avoiding those feelings and sensations that come with a, a changing body. Um, you know, you can see body image becoming a real a real problem in young people if they can't become comfortable or they aren't taught how to understand that process. So yeah, that's a really important part of it. Um, interestingly enough, <clears throat> a lot of animals actually have kind of an adolescent period where they take risks and they love novelty or new things. They, they seek out sensations and there's lots of changes in relationships. You know, you can even go to a movie like The Lion King and watch how, um, you know, I'm not going to remember their names, but the two little lions when they were kids wrestled and tumbled and and then and when they went away from each other, when they came back, oh, this is a whole different relationship because puberty and you're cute and everything else. And so changes in relationship come out of that, um, you know, and, and adolescence is a time for, you know, teens to try on adult roles. OK, can I be the leader of this small group? Can I act in a. A theater show? Can I actually successfully practice and improve my skills on a on a on a field or a court? Um, you know, adolescence is supposed to broaden and build strengths. It tests out figuring out what we love, not just following up. And we've talked about this, but not just accepting everything that my parents have handed me and that they live for, but testing out what we love. Fail and try again. Um, you know, I, you can see adolescents going with neat hair one month and the next month it's purple uh, and then they want to try extensions. And so they're just trying on different roles and looks and identities, um, you know, and, and all of these things are the essence of the discoverer and young people that are struggling, you know, they lose they lose out on that um, because the discoverer is the part of us that tries that learns by doing you know there's a there's always the part you can read a book and learn something and you can go to class and you can do math and you can learn that way but discover is about learning as we're doing things uh, we try new things we experiment we're just like well let's see what happens um, I love hanging out I, I end up whenever I take and I've taken a lot of trip with youth groups and young people over the years and how they're just willing to try all these new candies and things that are on the shelves and I'm like well, there's no way I'm going to risk spending three bucks on something I don't know what it's like. But then I get to try them too, so that's always fun. Um, so kind of a good example of, of Discoverer is a baby learning to walk. All right? What is What does that process look like? It, it looks like they're standing up and falling down a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. H have, have you ever heard of any infants avoiding the trial and error process of learning to walk? No. Yeah, right. They don't. They don't. Their their advisor or that that inner voice doesn't get in the way and say, "Hey, you failed at that time. Don't do it again." You know, or you know, holding on that table makes you look like a sissy. Um, <laughs> you know, you shouldn't need that kind of support. That's stuff that the advisor is doing in adolescence brains. And so, again, we know that struggling adolescents or teens have, have avoided lots of things. If they're are, are if they're so afraid of failing or do not have the energy, which would be the kind of depression to try new things, they can become unskilled in in the discovery process. And unskilled at at discoverer makes you unskilled at self regulation, and it really makes you unskilled at relationships. And that looks like you know lacking awareness of emotions, thoughts, action urges, pure poor attentional control. Uh, really unable to reduce your own suffering um, while also not, if you're not good at discovering, you don't even enjoy things as much. Um, 
you don't figure out a, an identity. You just kind of like, well, I should do this or somebody has told me I should be that, you know, and, and it can lead to dissociation if you don't have a good sense of identity and you're not grounded in, in who you are. Um, also leads to a sense of emptiness. Again, those young people that say nothing matters. Part of that is they're not, they're not actually trying and doing things that matter to them and finding out things that matter. It can cause unstable relationships, interpersonal conflicts, co chronic family disturbance, isolation, um, difficulty in getting wants and needs met in relationships. And also really it can look like not being able to maintain one's self-respect in relationships. So when we when we ask parents about discover the the scale we use kind of goes from you know the ability uh, you know not able to say no to the ability to say no is part of it and that ability to to say no is not to say like no I'm not going to do my chores. That's the ability to say no I don't want you to touch me in that way or no, I don't need to try that just to fit in kind of thing. Um, and so that's the no we're talking about there. Those things that really damage your self-respect if they're not part of your values and not part of what matters to your family. So the opposite, that's unskilled and that's, you know, what, what my program helps and works with, but skilled self-regulation. And this is really always want to help parents know if they need to, um, is this a significant issue? Like I should go get some help for it. And, and that was one of our really early shows that we talked through that. But if you're seeing any of those things I just talked about as an unskilled discoverer, those are probably things you need to go get help on and work on. On the other hand, if your young person is skilled in self-regulation and relationship, it looks like they can accurately recognize their own emotions, thoughts, and values, and how, how those things influence their behavior. They can, they know what their strengths are and their limitations. They they have a well-grounded sense of confidence and optimism that, you know, I can make tomorrow better. The ability to establish and maintain healthy and rewarding interpersonal relationships with, with diverse individuals. And this isn't just romantic relationships. This is, you know, can I, can I step across the tracks? Can I actually talk to the other team I'm playing ball against? Do I, you know, do I make friends with other schools? That kind of stuff. Um, it, it, the strong discoverers are able to relate to others with acceptance and understanding, um, sensitivity to their diverse perspective and experiences. They can collaborate and coordinate actions with others. These are good team players. Um, they listen well, they cooperate, they resist inappropriate social pressure and they're able to negotiate conflict constructively. So we, when a young person is struggling, it, it doesn't stop that they have fights with their friends, but sadly what it usually means is that they end up avoiding that friend and losing that friend instead of negotiating the, the conflict. Um, so I'm hoping that makes the discoverer in this process of, of learning new ways to interact with the world kind of sound like it's a, a meaningful, reasonable thing. And for teens, most of these kind of things have to happen through that trial and error process. You don't get to just read a book about relationships and then go make friends. Um, you need to actually try that and do that and learn that in the process. Um, and so an example of this, you know, this is a metaphor. I really like metaphors, especially when I'm only getting to talk and not actually work with people. But imagine that you stand at the border of a wondrous country. And this, this could be adolescence, you know, if you think about it. One that has everything you could possibly find interesting. It has libraries and water parks, fascinating people, music, dance, museums, a range of entertainment, parks, zoos, and restaurants with every kind of cuisine. It has thriving forests with wide variety of animals and plants, many which you've never seen before. It has every kind of game and sport imaginal. All right, that sounds awesome, right? Totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, How also, however, country also has dragons, such as poisonous animals, con artists, muggers, and hostile gangs. Um, the challenge is this, the discoverer has no maps or guidebooks for this new country. 
And remember, we talked about the advisor as being a GPS. It's just trying to give you rules and examples. But if something's new, it doesn't have rules designed for that. And it would choose to stay comfortable and just say, no, don't try that because it would be scary. Um, so again, the discoverer has no maps or guidebooks for this new country. Instead, the discoverer must rely on trial and error to find, to find the fulfilling things and avoid you know, the dangerous ones. Um, the discoverer's journey is both exciting and scary. Does that make sense of what the discoverer is trying to do? Absolutely does. And why it's important for us to give our young people, I don't know, somebody might phrase it as a little bit of rope um, and see what happens and, and debrief it. Um, I was talking, I've got a family starting and right now they he, he had a long career in the military and he's like, I don't know how to transfer these skills to you know my children. And I'm like, well, one of the things the military does is after action reports. So debriefing uh, an experience, whether good or bad, and learning from it is a discoverer skill. That's uh, kind of one of those things about tracking it. Yeah, and so, and I, I guess it's a good time. Flexible discoverers, and it's really one of those things you want to be flexible on. You don't always want to just dive into new things. Sometimes you need to take safe routes or just keep doing what is already enjoyable. But flexible discoverers always pause. And that is something that is it is built into the the bold concept. Breathe deeply and slow down. Build this pause into your just way of doing business. So you observe your thoughts and feelings. In this case, consider how this behavior is going for you. All right. So if you are always have a really strong opinion when you talk with your friends, and then you you look back and you're like, well, I lost all these really neat people because I kept just slamming them with my opinion, you got to consider how that behavior is working for you. And maybe you find a different way to explore your opinion with people. Um, then you try something. All right. When we originally talking about defense mechanisms, the way defense mechanisms avoid us, you know, cause us to not really have our real feelings. We're we're doing something else actively, like slamming a door or getting angry or yelling at somebody um, instead of something that would actually help us feel what we're feeling or to get the task or experience done. So you got to try something new. You're going to use your discoverer to bypass your defense mechanisms. Do something else or new. This is where I always like to share, and you've probably heard it, but the, you know, what's the definition of insanity? Do you know that definition? No, I don't. Oh, it's a, yeah, it, it is continuing to do exactly the same thing and expecting different results. That's the definition of, in, or, uh, of insanity in the, you know, in the counseling world or the psychology world. You have lots of counselors and professors that have that up on their wall. Um, and the discoverer is the exact opposite of that. I'm going to do something else. I'm going to do something new and then I'm going to track it. You know, and tracking it means that it did it get me better at something? Did I did did lifting weights actually make me a better player? I can think back to my high school experience, and I was I was small. I'm an ADHD young person, and I was pretty small when I started playing football. And the guys got used to me tackling because you grab anybody at the knees, they're gonna go down. You trip them, kind of thing. Um, and so they were used to me tackling them, but. We were lifting weights like every day. That was part of the regime. And I can distinctly remember <laughs> the look on the running back's face when I met him chest to chest and threw him down as opposed to tackling his legs. He was just in shock. So again, I recognized right then and there that this whole weightlifting thing was developing both my physical strength and my ability to play football. The other thing you want to track is does it, you know, does it bring more vitality into uh, your life? Um, and then build it, trying new things to help build on your strengths and vitality. So one of the things we do with the young people is, and, and we're doing both of these today, is, is go through this strength sorting card. So you can find a list of strengths online and have a young person say, hey, I'm, I'm good at these five. These five are really good at these five. I'm, you know, I can see, but I don't use all the time. And then these I'm not good at at all. Actually, I've, just doing this with my own 10 year old daughter going through these strength cards and these values cards. And so finding those things that matter to her. So I get to learn who she is moving forward. 
Um, and so that's that's kind of the steps to do that. And when when things get in the way, that's when bold and and it's why I call this bold parenting is really important because if you're getting scared to try something new or you don't have the energy for it and and you're just it just stops you and leads to avoidance bold the bold process helps you move through that so you breathe deeply and you slow down so bold is a process for making wise decisions um breathing deeply and slowing down lets you observe your thoughts and feelings let you recognize okay i am i am scared here but then you need to listen to your values is it important for me to do this do i want to keep getting better at that do i want my life my world to expand do i want better relationships so if those things are true then you decide on your action um you decide on your action and you do it instead of um not or avoiding it kind of thing so any any questions about that i throw out a lot of information and no no and you spoke through a commercial break and it's okay I'm okay to see who you want from you the people listening maybe just tuning in at this time just tell us who you are give us your contact information and then you can continue okay well skipping that break for you <laughs> okay uh, yeah. yeah you got to stop me sometimes so again i'm I am uh, Jason Bone. I've been working with adolescents and families for 30 plus years in lots and lots of different roles. Um, I run an intensive outpatient. Uh, the Renew Counseling Center or the Anxiety Center at Renew offers significant intensive outpatient programs for adults and adolescents. We've been talking about the Discoverer, which is a finding new ways to interact with the world. Uh, I post all my information and lots of other resources at uh, boldparenting.online. And if you're in the Kansas City metro and, and want to, you know, access our services or one of the amazing clinicians that are here, you can go to anxietycenteredkc.com and, and find us there. Perfect. Uh, now we can continue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, that's, that's great. One of the things we do and and why I really kind of focus on this bold process is that discoverer, you know, in adolescence is all about creating ourselves. It's why it's really hard to talk to strangers. They're creating us with very little knowledge of who we are. There's a really great video by the vlog brothers on, um, we are all scared is what it's titled, but he really just talks about, you know, we can create ourselves really blandly and look and act like everybody else, and that might help us fit in. We can not care, which is sarcasm or defense mechanisms, um, or we can just push through and create ourselves all the time for kids and parents and friends and, and just try and, and recreate ourselves all the time. But that's really a kind of a scary thing. I mean, just like you've clearly gotten over it. I still get butterflies, but I, I choose the, the value of speaking in public and speaking to people. Um, but I, I know for a fact every single time, and you just kind of highlight it, I have to recreate myself every time I, I run into a new person or a new person listens to me and, and hope that that might be an important thing. Um, it also discover is about becoming independent. There's this dialectic or opposites of how much support does an adolescent need versus how much independence should they have. Adolescents, of course, want every bit of independence they can, you know, suck out of you. And parents, you know, good parents really just want to be supporting everything and are doing most things. And even even the rules they put are there to to support the young person. But there has to be this independence, this trial and error, this failure kind of cycle that we can learn from and that's that's really important to 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 build and increase behavior um and so we have to find a way to foster safe risk taking in our young people um and that that really should be adaptive risk and not maladaptive risk and adaptive risk includes things like stating your own opinion standing up for what you believe in even if it's your opinions different than others not not standing by and watching negative things happen it's doing things that matter and care for you. While maladaptive risk taking is is really is really um, reinforcing in the short term. So I'm in pain. Somebody's broken up with me. I'm really hurting. And in the short term, you know, smoking smoking marijuana sounds really really good. 
I forget the pain, I relax, I, I lose everything, but it really doesn't add up to vitality because you have to come back and do that same exact thing again and again to get to that same point. Um, and so maladaptive is if it's just for the short term and not for kind of the rest of your life. Um, I think we're pretty close to end. I, uh, I'm not sure what else to discover is really important. And if you're trying to do these things that's scary, it's really important. The last time we talked, we talked about the noticer. So there's a whole show on that. But the noticer is about recognizing those feelings, recognizing um, your environment and what's going on you, and then acting or reacting, you know, acting in ways that are meaningful in that, that are helpful and bring vitality and, and value to your life. Beautiful. Well, then I think at this time of the show is where you should tell us how we can contact you. Give us all your websites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, for the radio audience, I think going to boldparenting.online is your best choice. If you're in the Kansas City metro or anywhere, you can get to Bold Parenting from anxietycenterkc.com. And I am Jason at anxietycenterkc.com and would love to interact with anybody who wants to. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time today. As always, it's a pleasure speaking with you, and thank you for enlightening us, myself, and our <laughs> listeners, too. Okay? You bet. Thank you, Jill. Bye. Have a great day. Bye-bye.